Joining us now, courtesy of Chunkies, is the OG. He's BG of the Philadelphia Eagles, fresh off the big win in New Orleans in year 15 out of the great University of Michigan football program, Brandon Graham. Good to see you, Brandon. How are you? Hey, good to see you, Rich, man. I'm feeling good. You know, 15, like you said, it's it's been a great journey, uh, trying to end it on a great note. And, uh, you know, we are uh, feeding some feeding some people, too. Yeah, we'll get to the Chunkies uh, portion of our conversation shortly. A decade and a half. If I had told you that when you were selected 13th overall in the 2010 draft, Brandon, you would have said what? 15 years. Well, you know what? That's It was the goal because I'm a big Ray Lewis fan. I always uh, grew up playing linebacker until I got to college. And, you know, see him staying with the same team and then me doing the same thing, man. I might have not played 18 years with him, but 15 to do just for, just for me and still being able to play at a high level at this level uh, in this age, man, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling definitely fortunate. Well, and as you know, um, learning a new system, new defensive coordinator, you know, it, it'll take some time. And, and it seemed like your unit from weeks one and two to week three took a major leap. I mean, holding a team like New Orleans with 91 points in the first two weeks to just three for as long as you did and then coming out with the win at the end of the day. What, what what happened? What can you describe about the difference between first two weeks and what we just saw from the Eagles defense, Brandon? Well, I think them first two weeks, we learned a lesson. We learned the lessons that we needed to learn uh, as a team. We've seen some things where if we out our gap or we're not playing team defense, that we can get beat. And uh, Atlanta came in and did a great job uh, of exposing some stuff as far as, you know, when you're not in your gap, we're going to find you. And that's how this NFL is. It's about technique. It's about making sure that you're accountable for doing your job, worrying about your box. And then, um, you know, you don't have to press to go do other people's jobs, especially when you got a team that like we got. And so I think by the third game, now everything's starting to click. And now it's just about building and, and being consistent. How much is it your job to deliver that message in the locker room on behalf of the D.C.? BG? Oh, yeah. It's me playing 15 years, um, a lot of people – Love, love the insight of me playing this long and what I see. So I try to, if I don't know it, I mean, sometimes I get reminded by uh, some new guys that come in that's been a part of some great stuff uh, and be like, you know what? I forgot all about that. I might have to talk about this. But really, it's about attitude. It's about your, your work ethic every day. Um, it's about uh, you choosing uh, to not go out there and let it be you and you let it be, you know, not on your watch. That's how I, I say if everybody got that mindset, of, you know, I'm not going to be the guy. I'm not going to be the weakest link today. I mean, we're going to be headed in the right direction into a, uh, into team ball. And if us as a team with, with all these stars or whatever the roster say, it don't work if it's not team. And so I think that was our message. And people starting to believe it. Even like a 9-8 JC, that boy is out there. I told him, just go straight, man. Go get off that ball, get in their backfield, and I promise you, they're going to they gonna be in trouble. They're going to have to block you with two people. You know, and that's what that's what we got you here for. Yeah, I was gonna I was gonna ask you if you were talking to those two big tackles up front because that that basically everything can kind of work off of all that, right, Brandon? Yes, you can build off that because I mean we got some good edge guys with Sweaty. I think Huff is gonna come into the fold uh, pretty soon because Huff I see him work every day just like Sweaty and myself, uh, Nolan Smith. Uh, but it all works together if you got the D tackles in the middle uh, in the backfield. We gonna make sure we do our job and we set the edge and and make sure we uh, make it make the running back cut back to them because that's been our biggest issue is the run game and I think uh, we we set the tone with you know we're not gonna we're not gonna let that allow that to happen uh, like you think because of what happened the first two games but that was just what you needed to learn as a team and now we finding our identity now it's just about staying consistent yeah I, and I'm just wondering are you are you more verbal with Fletcher Cox I guess on on his farm. And Jason Kelsey on every television that we're not on right now, you know. So, <laughs> yep. are, are you more vocal right now with those guys out the door? Oh yeah, I'm vocal. I'm always vocal. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'll talk to Fletch after every game because, uh, you know, Fletch gonna let us know the real or where, where he think we are. And like I told him, you know, you know how it took us a little. It took us four games to kind of figure it out. Sometimes you start off hot and then you don't end as good. But I like that we starting off a little rocky so that we can figure out some things. But I, most of the time, uh, when you do see what you see on film, it'd be one or two guys not doing what they're supposed to do that we 
thought they should been doing. Like, you know, I trust you to do your job. And it and it be like that. But I feel like as a collective, we all had that mindset to get it right. And we, it starts in practice. But I talk to the, I, I do be a lot more vocal um, than I ever have because when I had Kelsey and Fletch, I, didn't, I can let them, I can put stuff off on them. But I still do it now with like Lane or Jordan Mulata coming to the fold. Mm. Uh, then you got, um, you know, on, on our side of the bar is me and Slay. And then you got um, uh, even Zach Bond and uh, N'Kobe. You know, they stepping into their own too. They they creating them household names. Like I tell people, nobody know who you are until you go out there and make them plays. So let's go out there together and do it together so y'all can be the new household names of the Philadelphia Eagles. Yeah, well, CJ can talk too, right? I think I've noticed oh, that. Oh, yeah. Hey, <laughs> you know, we need the attitude. You need the attitude. of uh, I like us Gardner Johnson because I know I'm going to get everything from him. And even though he make mistakes, but we we going to cover it up by our effort to the ball. We're going to play team ball and team D and make sure that you, um, you know, when, when, when you got – when you got to cover for your brother, um, you know it's no pro- it's no issue because of the chemistry we're building together. So uh, I like I like Gardner and uh, everything that he brings to the game. So uh, what's it like standing on the sideline in a game where you are putting it all out there? Offense, you know, is is uh, struggling to put up points. Your coach was going for it on fourth down instead of taking points, and it yep. wasn't working out. And then Saquon pops one for sixty five. Where were you when that happened? Just watching it? Or um, what was that? We, we was just talking about Smitty, and next thing you know, hey, we say we got to get it. We got to go out there and dominate for Smitty. We got to go do this because, you know, that's sh- the shot that he got. You know, nobody, I don't never want to see nobody get hit mm. the way, you know, who got hit, especially if it was late or not. It's just you don't want to see that in the game. And so we, we took that personally, but we was talking as a defense on the bench. And next thing you know, bam. Saquon took off and man, I just couldn't believe it. I was just like, Hey, we really, we really felt that one. And we went out there and we just wanted to finish the game the right way. Um, and you know, I was happy that we uh, got out of there with a win. So you're talking about when, uh, Devante Smith got hit. It's he, he seemed to be engaged, right? And, yeah. and the play was over. And then all of a sudden, as you pointed out, boom. And so you, you were all talking on the sideline, uh, angrily about that. And that's when yeah, Saquon, we were just talking was... about, yeah, not to cut you off, my sorry, no, but we were just talking about, um, you know, just hey, we got to do this for Devontae. Like that was that was a little that was a little cheap shot. You know, we gonna make him pay for it and all that stuff. And then it paid like right after uh, Saquon just took off the next play and touchdown. And I was just like, wow, man, we about to go out here and win this game. We got to go do it as a defense. Everything that we said, we got to go do it for real. And and not and it's not just for Devontae, but just for the team as a whole, but Devontae definitely added fuel to that. And listen, it's so silly to even say these words, but, you know, this is what I do for a living as I talk (laughs) while waiting for more (laughs) games to be played, and it's just three weeks in, but I I think Saquon's the MVP of the league right now. Um, You know, uh, obviously we saw what Josh Allen did on Monday Night Football. Mm -hmm. He's in the mix. You know, quarterbacks are are always going to be in that mix. But Saquon, what he's done already – uh, for your team, to me, it looks like he's a total difference maker. He's plussed you guys up in a way that maybe others could not have. What are your What are your two cents on Saquon being your teammate, Brandon? And I'm loving it because we have mutual friends already that we uh, associated with. That you know, I knew him off the field, but I mean, as a player, and know that he's a good dude off the field, and you know, on on fi- on the field making these plays. I mean, he was always a home run hitter every time we. Had to had to uh, plan against him. It's like, look, we got to bottle him up. We can't get him getting to our second level real fast because he know how to make people miss. And as you know, I know uh, I never played against him, but I have, uh, you know, watched him beat Michigan a couple times, mm-hmm. and it wasn't pretty. And man, <laughs> I'm glad he's on our team, and uh, I'm glad he loved being here. And um, thank you, New York, uh, for you know letting us have. Him. <laughs> It's too bad he wasn't on the team last year. You could have told him, you know, who was winning the national championship at the time. It's too bad he wasn't around for that. I don't know if you're informing him of what he may have missed collegiately last year being your teammate, Brandon. Yeah, because you know? he's talking now because he see us He see us when we wounded a little bit because uh, we lost a lot of people because Harbaugh, I'm glad he got the, the job over in San Diego. They're doing a good job over there, yeah. but he took everybody. And, um, you know, Sharon had to start from scratch. But I think um, for the most part, we'll rebound 
um, you know, we 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 have struggled this year as far as you know, but I think it's gonna build character for we'll the new guys. Yeah, we'll see. It's still a long season. We're marathoning. We're not sprinting. Right. It's a marathon, and they only lost one game. And that's I it. love that we got USC this last game. Oh my God, I can't I, I I can't believe Michigan pulled that one out. But this kid Mullings, right, no, number twenty. How good is he? This running he back, is right? Good. Right. He is good with Donovan Edwards too. Both of them and the O line, like building that chemistry together as they go. In the, in in the college, it's about growing as the team because as you seen, Michigan got stronger as the year went. And they just couldn't be messed with at, at towards the end. I mean, those guys was on a mission because they lost the TCU, lost all that stuff. So, but yeah, yeah, it was uh, it was it was good to watch last year. Yeah, and it's just like you were saying, you're 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 talking to your two big tackles. Those are the two, the you know, Graham and Grant are the guys that build off the whole Michigan defense too. You know what I mean? So, uh-huh. yeah, I'm sure you're you're watching that. Tell me what you're doing with the Chunky's community program, Chunky Sacks Hunger. What what are you doing, Bren, for that? Well, for uh, Chunky is donating a thousand meals for every second in the NFL, and um, you know I I'm loving that they wanted to uh, be partner with me, and you know that allow me to be a part. This is a childhood dream for me, and to know that we uh, out here uh, just providing meals for you know uh, people in Philly, and man, I just it's it's all about serving. You got to have a service mindset, and I'm just happy that uh, they thought of me. And, and Philly to be able to help them raise awareness to this uh, because, man, it's, it's something that that people can overlook because maybe, you know, you you got you know where your next meal is coming. But a lot of people don't. And, you know, we want to get out, you know, just be in the community and, and provide as much help as we can. And, um, you know, that's why I'm here today. And so for every sack, uh, every sack is 10,000 meals donated. And then you can go on uh, Chunky Sacks Hunger com if you want to keep up with how many sacks so far in the league all over the NFL. I think it was 161 right now. So that's a lot of meals uh, that's going to be provided. Uh, and we and, and it's still going. It's only week week four now. Yeah, and t- the T-shirt, the, the, the one you're wearing, available for purchase. Uh, 20% of every T-shirt purchase will go to the Feeding America platform as well. I like that. It's a soup that eats yeah. like a meal. I knew that ever since I was a child, sir. Uh, I like yeah. that. Um, at Tampa next, you're, you're, I'm sure you'd like to avenge the way your season ended last year. Is that on your mind as you're heading to Tampa, Brandon? Oh, oh, sure. You're thinking about that. I mean, you want to go out every week. It's a faceless opponent, but you know, it's a little bit of, I mean, they took our, they took, they took one from, from us last year. You know, the goal is to make it to the postseason, but then you got to win. And they, uh, they sent us home early. Uh, good job by them, but, uh, you definitely know that, um, a lot, a lot of us gonna be making sure that we focus this year because we felt that last year, and we 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 um we definitely looking forward to a good game. Faceless opponent, huh? So you don't it it doesn't matter. Are you gonna use the faceless opponent line on uh, Saquon when you go to the Giants in about a month? <laughs> You're gonna try that one on for size with him? What it's gonna think? be hard. It's gonna be hard because <laughs> he knows it, it, it ain't gonna be faceless for him. He already got that circle, so that's one week. I'm going to make sure I bring my real, I mean, like all the way A game for him because I know that feeling of, you know, just want to, uh, you know, when people feel like you're done and they don't want to, and they count you out and then look what, look what happened. You know, you get, uh, you get, you be a part of something else, something else special because another man's uh, trash is another man's treasure. And so we, we, we found treasure in this uh, and, and having Saquon and, uh, we definitely gonna know what to do with him, as you can see. Well, tell Fletcher I said hi next time he texts you. You know, but is, okay. is he is he down? Is he, is he in Mississippi? Is that where he is? Where is he? Where well, is he was he? in Philly uh, this oh. past game. He didn't oh. come on the field or nothing. Like he don't want none of the none of the the shine right now. He just want to be low key. Okay. So I seen him. He was on his couch um, uh, here in uh, Jersey, and uh, you know, uh, out in Jersey, and so okay. I knew he was. I knew he was here, but uh, he loved him going back and forth to the ranch and uh, being in Jersey. Okay. Well, say hi to him for me, and it's just a pleasure to chat with you, Brandon, and go blue, sir. Hey, go blue, baby. Uh, hey, let's go, Rich. That's it. Have the, a good one. Right back at you. The OG of Philadelphia, BG, Brandon Graham, on behalf of Chunkies, right here on The Rich Eisen Show. Catch The Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.